All right, you wanted to know what is the best way to get hired for a sales job in Wyoming? I have you covered. Trust me on this. I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step by step, how to find these jobs, how, how to reach out to them, how to get that job interview. What do I say in the interview? When do I say it? What do I want in return? I wanna make a friend. Just give the video a like, leave a comment, let me know if you thought it was helpful. Let's get you hired in Wyoming right now. I promise you with 100% certainty, this video will help you get hired. This video will help you get a job in sales. Whether you're already working in sales and you're ready to take things to the next level, or you're thinking about starting your career in sales, I'm gonna give you a little mini impromptu masterclass on how to get hired in sales. And I know a thing or two about sales and how to get hired in sales because my name is Matt Easton. I'm the founder of EastonUniversity.com, the number one sales training in the world for getting people like you results. Folks that go through our training, that earn their CMSC credentials, sell seven times more than the rest of the industry. But we're not gonna talk about sales training right now. We're gonna talk about how to get you hired. We're gonna talk about how to help you succeed in the job interview. And I took some notes. You're welcome. This is so much information. Grab, pause the video, okay? Grab a pen and a piece of paper because you're gonna wanna take some notes. I'm gonna check off all of this stuff. We've got a lot of stuff to cover in this video right now. But right off the bat, let's talk about traditional sales job hunting. What does that look like? So traditional sales job hunting is, you're probably doing this right now, you're going to LinkedIn, you're looking for job openings. You're connecting with recruiters. You're talking to recruiters about job openings. Maybe you're on job boards where you're searching specific companies for job openings, all right? That's all well and good, that's fine. But I want you to know this, traditional job hunting is gonna get you traditional results, all right? And here's what the traditional results are. You're gonna apply to a ton of jobs. Most of those jobs that you apply to are already filled. Imagine that, right? HR departments, a lot of times, they already know who they're gonna hire, but just because of fair hiring practices, they've gotta put that job available out there, all right? It's gonna be a lot of work on your end. Am I telling you not to do traditional job hunting? No, right? But I'm gonna share with you some easier ways. So you can continue to go down that path, apply to jobs, get a lot of well, you know, we've already hired the position or, you know, we're looking for somebody with a little bit more experience. I don't have to go through the hundred different things that you hear all the time when you're calling, when you're reaching out, doing traditional job hunting. For the most part, it's a complete disaster. Can you get a job that way? Sure. Am I gonna show you an easier way to get a job? Absolutely. All right, so traditional job hunting, you're gonna get traditional results. So. Let's start taking some notes. Let's talk about how we can get better. All right, next thing I wanna cover for you. High performers sell versus apply to jobs. What do I mean by that? If you've had any type of sales training in the past, if you've looked at any of our sample sales courses over at EastonUniversity.com, you're gonna learn that the true top performers out there sell. Selling is not just working with customers. Selling is not just working with clients. Selling is also the personal skills to sell yourself. And top performers approach the job interview as if it's a sale, right? They're going to do research on the front end. They're literally going to sell that company versus apply. What do I mean by apply? Here's how the standard way of getting a job goes with you applying. You find a job, you reach out, oh, I've got all of the qualifications, and then you apply. I'd like to talk to you about my past experience and you know, my career started 15 years ago at the Subway sandwich shop and then you know, I was assistant manager there and worked myself up to shift manager. You spend the entire time focusing on yourself. Why? That's what people do when they apply, right? True professionals approach this job as if they're making a sale. Hey, guys, based on my understanding of your current situation, you are looking for a new outside sales rep to work on your uh, mobile app product, right? I believe the capabilities that you need in this position are one, two, three, these three things, right? Based on my understanding of the situation, you're gonna need somebody that can do this, this, and this. True professionals really sell themselves and their understanding of that company versus wasting everybody's time in the job interview talking about their past. 
leaving it up to the hiring manager to connect those dots. Can Tom fill the role? Well, I think so, because he gave us a, basically a brief history of his entire life, and then they're having to connect those dots. A real professional is gonna come in with a power presentation of my understanding of your current situation, you need this, this, and this, Okay, next steps, I believe I have these, let's get started. So I want you to just re take a note right now, write it down, true professionals sell, amateurs apply for jobs. I don't want you to apply, I want you to really sell them on the job, okay? But how do we find this job? Remember, because traditional job hunting, traditional results. So next thing I wanna talk to you about, there's literally billions of high paying jobs out there. You're like, what, 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 what job board can I find the billions of jobs? They're not on any job board. Well, where do I go? Do I go to LinkedIn? It's not on LinkedIn, okay? You're in sales now. You wanna work in sales. When you have sales skills, when you have proper sales training, when you understand the sales process, things start to unlock for you and you start to realize, wait a minute, there's billions of jobs out there. All I have to do is do my research, figure out the industry that I wanna work in, figure out the type of sales job that I wanna have, right? And then when you understand what's going on in the industry, what's going on with a particular company, and there's easy ways that you can get results, right? I can talk to you about that offline, about what's going on with a particular company. You can literally create the sales job. Why? When there's no problem, there's no job. I wanna repeat that, because this is really important. Write this down on your notes. No problem equals no job. What do I mean by that? A company has to have a problem, right? They have to have some way that they're not hitting their goal right now, or a goal that's bigger than what they're doing right now. When you can identify what that problem is, this particular company, they're, they're looking to expand into the state of Wyoming. I happen to live in Cheyenne, right? There's the problem. They wanna sell in Wyoming. This particular company has these three big competitors, right? They're breathing down their throat. They've got Acme, ABC, and uh, Quality, the three big companies. Now I've got a problem. You, you guys are faced with pressure from Acme, ABC, and Quality all the time. Once you can identify the problem, you can then create a job for yourself. Does that make sense? Stop being an amateur and waiting around for them to go, okay, we've got this goal or we've got this problem, here's our current situation. You know what would help us get there is if we did this job, let's post this on the job board, right? When you figure out what's going on with a company and you understand what their current situation is, what their ideal state is, what their problem is, and you can call them and say, hey, Based on my research, based on my understanding, you guys are facing competition from Acme, from Quality, from, I can't remember what was the other one, ABC, right? I believe I've got something that may be a game changer for you. When you can figure out the problem, you guys are introducing a new mobile app, you guys are facing pressure from XYZ, you guys wanna expand into Puerto Rico, right? When you can figure out what the goal or the problem is of that company, it's very easy for you to then literally create a job and present the solution to them and you are a part of that solution. It becomes very easy. All right, a little bit off topic here. This is so important to you, all right? Please comment below. At least give me a thumbs up if this helped you. You don't have to admit that you're one of the people that this helped, right? If you're embarrassed, but don't be embarrassed. 94% of people, according to our research, has this problem. I wanna to talk to you about your OGM your outgoing message on your voicemail. Did you even know you had one? Have you listened to it lately? Do not pass go, do not move forward, do not do anything else of all the things that I'm about to talk to you about until you edit and audit your outgoing message, okay? Most people have one of two things, right? They've got the robot, that's the out of the box outgoing message. You've reached 720-660-3202. Leave a message at the beep. And it's not even a human voice. It's the robot voice. Beep, right? That's unprofessional. You need to make sure that as you're searching for a job, that when people call you and they get your voicemail, that you have a professional message. If you have one of those jokey messages, you know what to do, right? Or, hey, what's up? It's Mike. Leave a message. You're killing yourself you're not gonna get a job, right? I want you to be down to business. I want you to be clear and concise on your voicemail. Something like, 
You've reached Matt Easton. Your call is very important to me. Please leave a message or send a text with how I can best respond and that's exactly what I'll do, right? You've reached Matt Easton. Your call is very important to me. Please leave a message or send a text with how I can best respond and that's exactly what I'll do. If you don't have a voicemail like that and you're out searching for jobs, you are killing yourself. Every time somebody calls you to schedule an interview or learn more and they have to listen to the out of the box robot or worse, some message where you've got kids screaming in the background or some jokey voicemail that you've left on there since college, right? You've reached Chug, man. I'm out partying, bro. I'll get back to you. You're literally killing yourself. Do not do anything else I'm about to talk to you about until you change your voicemail, right? You've reached Matt. Your call's very important to me. Please leave a message or send a text on how I can best respond and that's exactly what I'll do, right? Short, down to business. When they hear that, they're like, dang, this person can get stuff done. Next thing we gotta audit right now. If you wanna get a job, the next thing we gotta talk about, and by the way, nobody ever talks about this kind of stuff because they're afraid to. I'm not afraid to talk about this stuff. Our team over at Easton University gives you very real world training that's why people that go through our training make seven times more money, right? Because we go through all the real world stuff. We go through the stuff that people either avoid, they don't know about, or they're afraid to talk about, all right? One of the other ones right now is your personal email address. You're gonna be applying for jobs. A lot of you right now are applying for jobs with rainbow6509302 at aol.com as your email address. Or God forbid, Todd Man chugs a lot, 302 at gmail or windtalker509. If you have any type of garbage personal email address, I need you to change that right now. Like your name's like, let's say you have the same name as me, Matt Easton, right? Hopefully you can get m.easton at gmail.com. You can't because there's other people that already have it. I wanted to get that one, right? But come up with a personal email address. Maybe it's matt.david.easton at gmail. Maybe it's m.easton at gmail. Come up with some deviant of your name, right? Use the, feel free to use the dots, and then at gmail, okay? Google's not paying me to say this. If you're using a Comcast.net, an AOL, an Earthlink, whatever those old school ones are, it makes you look unprofessional. Nobody gets fired for hiring somebody that has a Gmail address. So I want you to eliminate all the dog lovers, all the chug mans, all the years. Don't do a year 2020, right? Or God forbid, uh, Susan looking for a job. Man, what are you, professionally unemployed? Come up with an email address. Play around on Gmail, different variants of your name and a dot. You need to have a professional email address. I'm telling it to you, because I want to help you. I want you to get hired, okay? So fix your phone voicemail, fix your email address, okay? Let's talk about prospecting, calling for that job. I want you to have a connection with everybody that you call, even if there's not a job posted, right? We're gonna talk about creating our own jobs. The best way for you to get connected with people is on LinkedIn, okay? What a lot of people don't realize is you can say you're connected with anybody on LinkedIn because there's not just first degree connections. You don't actually have to be first degree connected with them in order for you to leave a voicemail and say you're connected, right? They can be a second or third degree connection. And you're connected with a billion people on LinkedIn in the second or third degree. So when you're leaving a voicemail, you could say something like this. Hey Bob, it's Matt Easton. You and I are connected on LinkedIn. I noticed some big changes with your top three competitors. I've got an idea that I wanna run by you. Might be a game changer for you guys, but I'm not sure. Can you give me a call on my mobile? The number is 720-660-3202, right? Very professional, not, uh, hey, I'm calling because I'd like to work for your company, right? Let them know you've got an idea. Might be a game changer for them, but you're not sure. Let them know how you're connected. Whenever you're leaving a voicemail, this is gonna help you once you get hired in the job too. Always be right down to business, super professional, say your name, how you're connected, and then let them know, hey, I've got an idea I wanna to talk to you about. Can you give me a call on my mobile, okay? That's gonna separate you apart from everybody else and then leave your mobile number. All right, if they answer, 
okay? I want you to be short. I want you to be clear. I want you to be down to business. You now have this person, this high power executive that you just called and they answered their phone, right? Hey, Chris, Matt Easton here. You and I are connected on LinkedIn. Listen, I've got an idea that might help you guys with the rollout to Wyoming. I've got an idea that might help you increase your sales on the outside division, whatever it is that the research that you've done. Do you mind if I send you over an email with what I was thinking? Yeah, sure, that'd be great. Perfect, what's the best email for you, Todd? And then get their email address and then you're gonna send them a short letter. Do not try and sell them when they've cold answered the phone. I want you to be a professional. I want you to be down to business. I want you to let them know you've got an idea. Now, if they open up and go, hey, I'd love to hear about it, right? then be prepared to talk about it. But the last thing you wanna do when you're searching for a job is be that kind of high pressure, almost like a phone version of a door-to-door -door salesperson where they're regretting opening the door. Just make sure you be very clear, talk to them about, hey, here's an idea that I have that I think can help you guys expand your sales by 20 to 40%, wanna run it past you, can I send you an email with a few bullet points of what I was thinking about? They're gonna be like, yeah, absolutely. They're gonna be like, who was that, right? We need more people like that on our team. Okay, I wanna make sure that when you send that email, you're requesting an interview with them, right? I've got these four ideas, okay? I know your big three competition, they're breathing down your neck. I know according to the latest uh, press release that went out, you guys are hoping to increase your outside sales by 30% this year. I also know that you guys are expanding in Wyoming. Based on all of that, I believe I have the capabilities that are gonna help you get there on all fronts. I'd love, to talk to you, I'd love to talk to you about the idea of me joining your team. Make sure in that email that again, you're very clear, current situation, capabilities needed, next steps, I'd love to set up a time to formally talk to you about the interview, okay? I want you to prove to this employer every time that you're talking to them that you are a closer. Why is this that so many people do sales interviews, do job interviews in general, and they never try and close the deal? Hey, Todd, does it make sense for me to join the team, right? Todd says, yes, fantastic. I thought you were gonna say, I think this is a perfect fit for both of us. Let's talk about the next steps for me to get started. Hey, Todd, does it make sense for me to join the team? Todd says, no, or I'm not sure I need to think about it. What's a good next step then? You wanna make sure that you're taking control of this conversation. What is it about people? I have people that interview at our company, Easton University, all the time. They go to the website, eastonuniversity.com. They call the number 800-628-1456. They're like, man, I, want, I saw the guy on YouTube. I wanna work for you guys, right? We give them a job interview and they don't try and close us. Well, I worked at Subway back five years ago and you guys are a really neat company and oh, by the way, what do you guys, uh, what's, what do you pay for salary and what's your uh, overtime policy and how many vacation days will I get, right? It's like this person is adding more problems to our life. Make sure that every time you talk to somebody, you're down to business you're clear and you're closing them, right? A great way to close them is to simply ask them, does it make sense for me to join the team? Does it make sense for us to move forward? You can do mini closes, we call these advances. Does it make sense for us to schedule a formal interview? Anytime you wanna either close a deal or move it forward, simply ask that person if it makes sense. You're not being pushy, you're not being manipulative, you're not being high pressure. They're in total control. You're asking them if it makes sense. Here's the really cool thing about in a job interview, asking somebody if it makes sense to move forward or it makes sense to have you join the team. They can't reject you on you joining the team, only the timing of it, because you asked them a timing question, right? If they say no, you asked them if it made sense, so they're basically saying not right now, which just again opens the door for you to say, what's a good next step then, okay? So let's talk about, this is a huge, huge game changer for you, all right? I got this little bag from Home Depot. Man, I'm prepared, wanted to help you guys out, okay? Everybody I've ever taught this to has gotten the job. I want you to go, I said Home Depot, it's Office Depot, my bad, all right? And I'm not, Office Depot's not paying me. You can go to any office supply store. I want you to grab a couple binders, all right? And I, well, there one just fell out, okay? If you've got two binders, that's gonna mean you're interviewing with two people. I want you to grab four really nice pens. Two pens 
for each binder. I'm gonna repeat that because it's important. One binder for each person. So if it's you and somebody else, a binder for you and a binder for somebody else. And then two pens in each binder. Why the two pens? What if one pen goes out, right? You're prepared. This is psychological warfare. You are showing them, boy, I am spot on. I'm prepared for anything. They're gonna have a pen. No, I'm gonna be prepared for them not having a pen. I'm also gonna be prepared that the pen in the binder goes bad, okay? In this binder, I want you to create a one-page document that talks about your understanding of, and you're gonna break it into three categories. Their current situation the capabilities that they need, and then in that one page, next steps. Next steps, I believe I have all of the capabilities to help you guys increase sales in Northern California. I believe I have all of the capabilities to help lead your inbound sales department, whatever it is the position that you're creating. So you're gonna start with current situation. Current situation is Bradco is expanding into Northern California. You've got a lot of big goals for the company with the new Northern California expansion. Capabilities that you need. You're gonna need somebody that understands the NorCal market. You're gonna need somebody that's sharp as attack, enthusiastic, and can hit the ground running. You're gonna need somebody with a very proven sales process, right? Based on my understanding of that current situation, next steps, I believe I have everything that you guys need. I have my CMSC, my Certified Master Sales Consultant credential from Easton University. I've got a video uh, testimonial from Matt Easton himself saying I would make a perfect, perfect Northern California Regional Manager. Make sure that you're prepared on everything. Again, you want to be closing them. You wanna be in control of that situation, all right? So that's the binder. If you wanna talk a little bit more about the binder, call my offices. I'm happy to get on the phone with you. I can chat with you a little bit. If you wanna talk about that credential, I can chat with you about that. If you wanna talk about possibly, I could be persuaded, right? Be really nice and professional and down to business. When I call you back or if you get me on the phone, I could be persuaded to maybe give you a letter of reference as well. Again, the office number. Let me make sure I get this right. 800-628-1456. Call the office if you have any questions on that, okay? So that's that binder. All right, I wanna make sure that you guys realize this. Resumes are dead. Are you gonna put a resume in your binders? Yes. Do I want you to focus on that resume? Absolutely not. That is the big mistake that people make in job interviews, whether it's a sales interview, whether it's a engineer interview, whatever type of position it is. Huge mistake that we make is we set up this interview, we get this powerful executive's time or this hiring manager's time, and we spend the entire time going through our resume and talking about us. I'm sorry, I wanna be real with you. They're not hiring you. They really don't care about your background and your past experience. What they're trying to do in talking about that is they're trying to relate can this person, can Gina help us accomplish our goals? right? So what I want you to do is I want you to focus on your understanding of their current situation, your understanding of the capabilities that they need, right? Now, a lot of hiring managers aren't used to somebody doing a job interview in this way. First of all, they're going to love it. But second of all, they're going to fall back to their old ways. And they're going to say, well, tell us a little bit about yourself, right? This is your perfect opportunity to pivot back to current situation capabilities needed and next steps, right? Instead of going, well, you know, I started my life off as a teenager and I was captain of the basket weaving team at school. And then, you know, 17 years ago, I got that job at Subway and boy, cleaning toilets. I knew I didn't want to do that. Don't waste anybody's time with it. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Gina. Man, I'm so glad you asked, right? I'm sharp as a tack. I'm enthusiastic. And I really feel like I have a unique perspective in being able to understand companies, individuals, current situations, and where they wanna go. For example, I noticed you guys are expanding into Northern California. Based on my understanding, you're gonna need this, this, this. This is a super important, this is a super important milestone in the company, right? Am I, did I, did, does all of that match what you guys need? Well, yeah, it does. That's exactly what we're looking for. Great, great. Did I miss anything? No, I mean, well, actually, you know, we were thinking 
We want the person that has that regional manager job to actually do Nevada as well. Okay, Nevada, right? And oh, I bring up a great point. Make sure in your binder that you have places for notes for them to take notes. So print out, just take, make a Word doc and put I love it if you put their logo on there, right? In your name and your mobile number at the top, and then just put little lines for them to take notes so it looks like a legal pad, okay? And then I want you taking notes inside your binder as well. Nevada, to unpack that for me. Talk to me about what your vision is for Nevada. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, that's new for me. Yeah, Nevada, we want somebody that's NorCal and Nevada. I love it, that sounds great. So how much time were you thinking you want to devote to NorCal? Is, is NorCal, predominant and then Nevada, or are you looking at them 50-50? Well, honestly, we're hoping Nevada, you know, maybe 20% of the sales come from Nevada, but predominantly we want somebody that could cover NorCal, right? Make sure that you have notes, pads, and lines in that binder, and you're working with them. Hey, Tom, based on my experience, you need somebody that's gonna handle Nevada, but NorCal is critical, right? You're gonna wanna do, how, what are we talking in sales? What do you wanna do, 14 million? In NorCal, yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd like to do 14 million, uh, but if we don't hit 14 million, minimum we have to do to make sense of this position is they've got to do 10 million, 10 million. How did you guys arrive at that number? Well, this is based on our rollout, based on our research of the market. Make sure that you're writing down everything. Listen, you guys are gonna need somebody that's a specialist in NorCal, okay? 80% of the time, they're gonna be managing NorCal. 20% of the time, we're gonna be heading over to Nevada. Goal here we wanna do 14 million in sales, but we have to do, guys, we've gotta do 10 million. I believe I've got the capabilities to jump in, hit the ground running in NorCal. Make sure you are managing this job interview as if, as if it's a sale. Because guess what? It is a sale, and it's the biggest commission sale you are ever gonna get, all right? So, I want you to realize there's a billion different jobs out there. You do not have to be going to job boards to find a job. You do not have to be going to LinkedIn and find a post. Do I want you doing that? Sure, absolutely, all right? But I want you to also start thinking about how can I create a job? There's so many great companies out there that if you approach them and said, hey, I understand your current situation. Here's what I think you guys need as far as capabilities. Here's next steps, right? Take control of the situation. Close them. Make sure that you're showing up with binders, okay? In that binder, have their logo on the front. Have the position, regional sales manager, NorCal in Nevada, right? Have your name on there. Have your mobile number. I cannot tell you, 100% of the time I have taught people to make these binders. Not only do they get the job, but I have so many stories where people are like, that binder is still sitting in the CFO's office in their bookshelf. They're like, this is the most impressive job interview I've ever had. Create that binder. Make sure that you're selling them. Does it make sense for us to move forward? What's a good next step then? If you wanna talk about how you can get your CMSC credential, your certified master sales consultant credential, you can earn it in less than a month over at EastonUniversity.com. If you want to talk about it, our people are in a hurry to help you. We want to see you get hired. You can reach our office at 800-628-1456. Give us a call. We want to help you. If you're looking for a little bit extra, right? You want a letter of reference from me. Maybe you want one of those video testimonials from me. Um, if you're nice, I might be persuaded to do that. Call the office, 800-628-1456. Tell them you wanna to speak to Matt Easton. All right, I travel a lot, I do a lot of sales training. I might not be able to get back to you right away, but I will get back to you, I'd love to talk to you. As you can probably tell from this little impromptu masterclass, okay? I'm passionate about this stuff. It makes me happy. Nothing brings me more pleasure than helping somebody like you get hired. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of complete garbage out there. I'd love to, I'm so excited that you made it to the end of this video. I hope these tips help. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'm so excited to see your career blast off. Again, my name's Matt Easton. Subscribe to this channel if you wanna work in sales or you already wanna work in sales or you're already working in sales. Subscribe to this channel, it's full of tips to help you. Check us out over at EastonUniversity.com. If you're looking for sales training, I want you to check this out.
The world of sales has completely changed. Today's customer has access to more information. Today's customer has more choices. The business world needs you. Studies have shown that 84% of salespeople fail to achieve their goals. The old sales training, well, it just doesn't work today. I'd like to teach you how to take the stress out of selling in a way that's meaningful to you and your customers and get you seven times more business. I'll show you how the perfect sales process works. I'm gonna walk you through everything from prospecting to closing the deal. I'm gonna show you how to determine your prospects' wants and their needs so you can build value in your solutions. You will learn how to handle any objection or complaint. I'm gonna show you how to connect with your customer so it's easy for them to buy from you. I've taught the best companies in the world and thousands of people just like you how to hit their targets. Selling is complicated. I'll simplify it for you. There's more competition than ever before. I'm gonna show you how to be number one. All of a sudden, your career is gonna make perfect sense. Even if you've never worked in sales or the corporate world before. And for the advanced sales professionals, I'm gonna show you how to take things to the next level. Easton University is a new, simple, step-by-step -step process that's effective in any industry, large or small. You are about to become a certified master sales consultant. I'm Matt Easton, and this is Easton University.